Right, hello, hello and welcome. Welcome to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Right, so what are we doing today? Hang on, it says, does it say I'm live? Waiting for, am I live? Yes, I'm live. Okay, this new uh, YouTube streamer, I've still got to get used to it. I'm, I'm not particularly used to it. Anyway, we are doing a Real Animator free view today. So um, we are going to be continuing with our series on uh, how to design a short film or make a short film based on uh, the little um, short that one somebody in the Real Animator training library who was also attending an animation college was assigned uh, something on her college course on how to do a short, making a short film. And they were rushing her and I think she was not too inspired by it. So it inspired me anyway to, to, to go through the motions in this quick little series where we, in episode one, we designed uh, this character, Red Riding Hood. I have to keep stressing that this, even though like I'm calling it how to make a short film, it's never done just by one person all in one go and we've just designed the character in an hour like that. So, so just, you know, just you'll just have to roll with it. It's giving you a professional flavor of the process, but a lot more effort and work goes into the real process than what I'm doing on these streams. Um, so in episode one, we designed the the Red Riding Hood girl. In episode two, we came out with the villain uh, the wolf uh, character and in episode three we uh, did a little bit of development concept art mood board because our little short is going to be based in the forest um, which is uh, which is what it was all about um, the episode today I've had to do a little bit of pre-planning uh, because it's something that I'll talk about as I do it um, it's uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of environment design because there's grandmother's cottage so we need to i need to show you how to go about doing something like that uh which is what we're going to be doing in today's uh uh stream before we do that um i think it'll be nice to uh just give you guys some uh an update on uh the uh exercise set by one of my real animator training library students it wasn't an exercise i commissioned him 500 for 500 us dollars i asked him to clean up a a scene uh, that i animated for one of the courses in the real animator training library actually it's a five part four part dialogue course where we animated this piece of dialogue and it was in rough it was something i wanted to clean up myself but he went ahead i paid him and he did it um so what better, uh, I mean, this stream is brought to you by the AMB Animation Real Ed Animator Training Library. If you want to learn hand-drawn animation, just visit ambanimation.com and join the Real Animator Training Library. Um, and what better example than to show you the caliber of the kind of material that comes out of that place, because I have the finished result here. I have, um, here is Aaron's cleanup of my so, scene. I so let's bring her in. Uh, there she is. So here is Aaron's efforts. So, oh. are you going to join the library? So, are you going to join the library? So there we go. So, are you going to join the library? And just so you can see the progression, so you'll see my work in rough and then you'll see Aaron's color work. I put together this so, little thing. So, are you going to join the library? So, are you going to join the library? So you can see what it so, looks like. That's are Aaron's you lines. Gonna join the library? And this is my so, stuff, the original are rough. Are you going to join the library? So, are you going to join the library? So, and that's are how you it started. Gonna join the library? And here it is with the final so, comp. Are you going to join the library? Okay, we get the message, Nino. For those of you who don't know, Nino is my lovely wife who was the uh who's turned into an animated character uh for that particular scene and she also voiced it so um there you go that's the outcome of uh the whole thing the commission is over now aaron's work uh was amazing i'm very happy with uh with with his efforts 
Um, I'm very proud of him. Right, so with, before we begin on today's lecture, um, I'm going to go in and see the chat and just say a few hellos, and then we'll get started. So, who have we got online? We have got uh, the man Cape. Good to see you. Um, Cape is always late. It's always late where Cape is when I'm streaming. So, um, Live Fantasy, another super talent. Dylan Draws, Travis the Enter Animate, another super talent. Um, they're all just, all these library members of mine are just, I'm just so proud of them. Wait till you see what Travis is going to unleash on you all. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Okay, Fapio. Three, hello, hello, how are you doing? Uh, Maharashi Gautam, Alessandi Rojas, I saw your post on Instagram that you tagged me in of the pendulum spin. Superb effort. Hey, uh, Tala Mansoor. Um, Tala Mansoor, I have the most thorough anatomy archive available. Um, uh, so I have already just joined the Real Animator Training Library and um, yeah, there's so many... Uh, on anatomy there in terms of perspective you're going to see my take on perspective today a little bit it's more from a storyboarding point of view and less from you know um, you know it seems to serve me all right it wouldn't I wouldn't survive as an architect but that's why I don't work as an architect so anyway um, you'll get some ideas on that today but uh, it's it's going to be very different it's going to be very organic and very freehand um, he actually has thank you Fapio um, I think they meant anatomy and perspective. Hey, Travis, you and I both know that, you know, once you can draw uh, in a certain way, um, it all kind of comes together, which is what I'm going to show you today, uh, actually. Uh, so, Jung An, my friend, good to see you. Eee, I'm arrived. I like that. Akal the warrior, really spanner in hand, spanner in hand, to, to keep this chat in line. Um, it's so well done. See, and, yep. Thank you, Silver Sun. Yeah, so this is just exciting times. As the library is growing, its members are starting to surface, which is what I was always knew was going to happen. And it's just, you know, I just love it. You know, there, you know, I just love seeing the change um, that's happened in people's lives uh, and people who have actually undertaken the training for real. And now they're getting real results. And it's just a pleasure to not only watch it, but also I've got people who I can trust in and hire to do to help me out uh, as I get more ambitious with the things that I do. Right now, um, on to the uh, on to the lecture. So we already talked about it, but very quickly, character out the way, character out the way rough mood board out the way so the forest is kind of like we've got a mood and an idea of how to storyboard the forest so the next thing that we're going to do is there's a major location okay we're just doing a small 30 second little trailer for our short film but there's a major location in this and there's there's two uh, but I'm, I'm kind of question mark over one of them one of them she had this house with chicken legs I don't know if I want to keep that but, you know, I could turn those chicken legs into tree stumps. So that's for another lecture. So at the moment, um, I'm treating this like there's one major location. OK, so here's a little thing. Uh, many things when a director is sitting down, you know, or especially if you're directing a TV series. OK, when you get different episodes, you always think, OK, how many characters? OK, how many how many locations? OK, and how many props? OK, how many props? So that way you can go off to your people. OK, we need a character designer. We need a location designer and a prop designer. When they're trying to save on budget, they often try to, they often have the goal to clump these two together or even these three together. And I tell you what, they're getting so the standards in animation are going so down nowadays. OK, this is why, you know, in a way, I don't like working professionally for a reason. Um, anymore because storyboard storyboard artists always had to be you know a lot of people just don't realize how godlike these guys are okay i yes i like to call myself a god <laughs> okay no but like you know joking aside a lot of people don't realize just what is expected okay so i have showed you here like um I've designed a character. I've designed another character. I've just done a bit of a mood board. Bit of, bit of, this is bordering into concept art. OK, are you with me? OK, so now today I'm going to show you I'm going to show you location design. OK, now the storyboard artist 
is a master. You see, you get a lot of these morons that say, Oh, Jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. Shut up, moron. You know, because the fact of the matter is, is the storyboard artist is the master storyteller. Okay? Master storyteller. He takes the script and he completely, you know, draws the viewer in by his angles, the language of cinema, you know? Language through angles, framing, composition, all that kind of stuff, staging. He's a master of staging, okay? Master at staging, the law of staging. But you can see that we're having to dabble in practically everything. So, yes, while I have, I have been professional, I have been a professional character designer before, but I've never been a professional concept artist, and I've never been a professional environment design artist, okay? But yet, I can share with you a process that I've used many times, to actually, because although I say I've never been professional because I've been credited a story, many times they ask the storyboard artist today in this day and age, "Oh, can you can you can you design the you know just just do a rough idea, just do a rough idea of the let's say we've got the cottage that we're going to do today of the cottage, and then we'll give it to the design department." Okay, so the storyboard artist has a rough idea of the cottage. And the next thing he knows, the design department come back with the finished model, which is just a nicely drawn version of what he did or she did, you know. So in a way, you're doing other people's jobs for them. Um, and it's, you know, it's OK to be the springboard for ideas. Isn't it great to be the springboard for ideas? Yes. But it's not so great when, you know, you basically are the idea man in disguise and you're not getting paid for it you know and you're not getting credited for it you know that's not good okay but anyway that's another beef that's not something that i'm gonna i'm not uh, that i'm going to uh talk about this is a very productive uh process uh that we're doing today we're going to be talk designing grandma's cottage but the thing is, is I wanted to bring that to your attention, not so much to moan about not getting paid and credited, okay? We don't care, you know, we get paid in our own way through satisfaction, I guess. But, you know, just to show you how important story, artist, story artists are and just how much you need to think about certain things. And I'm going to give you a really good, I think some of you, if you're not, just I know much this is me sort of bordering on into pre-production now I know this is Anna everybody likes the real animator training library but this is more about away from the role of animator and now we got to learn how to actually make the film how to make the story interesting so we need to have good designs okay we need to have good designs now i know that they're going to be people time stamping this saying 12 minutes in that's when he actually starts drawing well they've kind of missed very important things and to be honest watch it you can you're more than welcome to watch my stream but if you're that kind of person you really don't belong on my channel because you're not going to you, you, this is not really the kind of content for you i'm too slow i don't get to the point Go and watch somebody and get your quick fix from that. Thank you for tuning in, but I'm not for you. Okay, right. So the we're going to really think how to make this interesting. Now, as a because obviously doing stuff like this is second nature to me. It's 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 my bread and butter. Doing environment design is kind of second nature to me but it takes me a little bit longer because it's not something I do as often so what I did is a couple of hours yesterday um, after coloring in Aaron's animation uh, cleanup animation I decided to plan this lesson so it would go a little bit smoother and and I, I could explain to you in, in a very good way so I'm gonna reverse engineer so I'm gonna show you what I did um, what I've done so I've come up with two ideas for the cottage hair. And I'm going to show you how I came about with these ideas and what I did to get to get it. Now, again, just like uh, just like the um, just like the character. This is just a starting point. OK, this is just a starting point. It doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, this is the way that we're going to go with it, okay? Um, 
if we were doing it for real, we'd need to spend a lot more time than than two hours or three hours drawing a, a, the first thing that kind of looks good. But I'm going to have to do that on this stream just to give you the idea of of the process. OK, so that way it, it can run a bit smoother. So that's what we're going to do. OK, so I'm going to show you how we went about doing that. Now, obviously, research is very important. Um, I can't skim through all of these because they're mixed up with images from Ridley Scott's legend, which we did from to do this one. But this is just a random thing I found on Google, a photograph of a cottage um, on a Google image. And um, what I liked about it was the thatched top. And I'm going to tell you why I did that. Um, and why it why I use that and I used a couple of other images in a minute as to why I came up with that design. So first and foremost, I'm going to show you um, the process. Uh, I'm going to show you two processes of what goes in my mind when I do this. OK, so the first process is, is I'm initially thinking um, about uh, I want the, I want, okay, I've just made this up on the fly. Grandma, grandma in my version might be evil, okay? She might be something to do with the wolf, okay? She might have turned, turned her brother, this might be her other son, okay? Uh, I don't know, I'm just making shit up now. And she might have turned him into a wolf and he's actually her sister and she's poisoned him against her, I don't know. This might be her, you know, her other grandchild from another from another child. I don't know or something and he's poisoned. So, you know, so in my mind, grandma is very wolf like herself. OK, so that's that's just the premise that I started with. So what's her cottage going to look like? So I want her cottage to be kind of look not. I don't want her cottage to look threatening. OK, so we don't want it to look threatening. That's important. We want it to look like a like a small kind of a small, not too big, you know, small, so small ish. And we want it to have. But I want to hint. Of something to do with wolves in it. OK, something to do with canines or wolves. OK, so the first thing, obviously, this this you could go to town on this and a real like somebody who is really paid to do environment design. Uh, would would do a really stellar job on this idea as a director you might give them these suggestions and they'd go to town with it because they know about architecture and all those kinds of things I don't I just googled image and went off the top of my head as a story man as an ideas man okay so and likely you know if you're making your own film at home you can do it this way too and you can still get pretty good results okay um so I thought, what about shapes? OK, I've got to think about shapes. What about shapes? How can we make the cottage, OK, cottage look like a wolf, maybe? Look like a wolf. OK, so I came up with two very quick ideas, and I'm just going to show you how I kind of came about with them. So the first idea that I had was, OK, um, why don't we think about it like a have the cottage to be like a a foot so if we think about a canine's foot you know let's just very quickly rough in something here so we can have this kind of shape so i'm going to use this as a basis okay for my for my cottage design okay just very quickly I'm going to use this as a basis for my cottage design. So let's just work work on top of this. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to think, OK, well, this thing over here, this can be kind of like if this is all the floor. So somebody asked me about perspective earlier. OK, well, what you're going to watch the way I, I naturally instinctively use my draftsmanship to come up with drawings that aren't necessarily 100% accurate, but they've served me fine on a professional level and nobody's ever complained. And, you know, um, 
yeah, that's all I can say. And this is how I regularly storyboard and whack, whack things out and get my angles. So you need to think about skyline if you're worrying about all that. So just these little kind of grids that I rough out. Okay, so I'm going to think, okay, we got a block here, which is interesting. Now I'm going to think maybe, okay, let's divide that in two. Okay, let's divide that in two. Okay, and then let's maybe think about, maybe we can think about dividing it into a third one on top. Maybe we might not use all of that space. So I'm thinking about that shape of that wolf's, um, the wolf's foot. Okay, then obviously there's a, a bit of the wolf's foot is coming out. So I'm, I then thought, okay, why don't we think about bringing this guy out a bit? You know, so let's, let's then bring another portion forward here like this. OK, so we did this. So you can see how I'm just really kind of blocking these uh, shapes out. I'm not caring too much about how accurate my perspective is and all this and that. It really this is a design process. If we start worrying about these, the angle and getting the perspective right, it's going to your imagination is going to suffer. OK, and it's all about imagination. Right. So I say, okay, well, that's not a bad start. That's not a bad start. So just to keep my perspective in line a little bit, okay, this is still all eyeballing. I'm not doing anything um, anything super uh, accurate here. I'm just eyeballing everything. So then I will just start doing getting my align tool, which could be a ruler, okay? Nothing amazing here being done by the computer that you can't do with a ruler, okay? So I'm coming here and I'm just going, okay, well, that this will give me a kind of rough idea, okay, that we'll come along there like this and we'll come along here like this and this can double up on there. And now I'm going to bring this out and, you know, I'm going to even, I'm going to change it to what feels right, okay? I really don't care, okay? So I'm going to come like this. There we go. Okay, that gives me a kind of rough idea. Now I'm going to I'm going to delete that and I'm going to go over there. We can see our wolf's foot is intact. So let's kind of bring that down a bit. Okay. Now, the wolf's foot, okay, has this has the uh, the kind of front sections, okay? So I'm going to divide these two portions of this front cottage bit i'm gonna have them kind of like together okay like this and the other portion i'm gonna cut into that okay like this and have that more like curling around the side like that and then i will do that on this side too you see i'm just working very very quickly again not caring about the perspective and all of that sort of stuff i'm just literally thinking about getting the the shape that i want to represent the wolf's foot in a in a kind of building way okay so then behind there i'm going to say okay well now we've got another kind of uh, a, a house behind there looking like a it could be a wolf's foot okay the ankle of the wolf so there we've kind of got the foot like building happening on there so now we've got the paws one two three four and what happens is, is there's also the thumb paw here. So I could say, you know what? That could double up as a chimney. So now I can take this bit that I had beforehand, okay? And I can see I'm just using my imagination. So I'm not caring too much about, oh, yeah, oh, we, we got to make the perspective right. You know, this is all concept, okay? Leave that for people who... Um, you know, who really want to specialize in that. If you want to specialize in that, you have to prioritize what where, what you want to do, okay? If, you, if this is something really important to you, then yeah, sure, take some courses on, on perspective and things like that. But if you want to just make concept and make your animation film, and this is an all right enough standard, then learn. You will have to have a bit of a grounding in perspective. I don't want to deceive you. I have got some of a grounding in it. OK, so I can kind of eyeball. So you will have to have a good sense, you know, but that can also be acquired through hand eye coordination, study of still life and drawing like that as well. You know, OK, so what I've done here is remember that house that I looked at. I've taken this kind of thatched roof idea from that house that I looked at and put that on there. So now we've kind of hidden a wolf's foot into the 
into the shape of the building and we've got like a furry effect coming here like this okay so we've got a furry like furry effect fur with the thatch foot now i have to think about okay well what about doors and windows okay well why don't we say that this particular one here okay is going to be a door okay so i'll come in here like that and i'll say okay that's going to be a door and on this side here about maybe one third uh let's divide it into quarters actually one two three four you see how timing charts help you kind of figure this out so one two okay so let's about uh, uh, like the the second two we'll make that a window and then we'll just come in here and divide that like that so we'll find it you'll see me tidy that up in a minute then i'll say okay how can i make it look less block like and more interesting why don't we think about putting some thatched uh thatching on top of hair as well like the thatched roof and do something like that so that makes it and then what we can do here is we can just divide this uh, and we can think about putting a window under here as well under the thatching so there we go so let's just move that over there so you can see the what's going on here so let's uh let's make that that color so that kind of stands out so there we've kind of got a an idea now what all i'm going to do is, is i'm going to very organically quickly um go over this so you can see where we're going with this okay so let's just get a uh an idea here so you get you can literally see that's all there is to it and then obviously you look at the texturing of some of these buildings okay so we want it to sit nicely on the ground and uh, there's there's more to this so don't think this is done done just yet okay there's more to this than meets the eye okay so now i'm gonna obviously i've got i've i do have other images looking at the the way the thatching works and you know it's really quite nice so we want that to kind of sit on top there a little bit okay so we're coming in here so having the thatching on the house uh in my opinion does give it that um element that that i was talking about earlier where we're kind of like hinting and of course when the color direction comes in then we can really uh go to town on uh on that as well you can then you know, it's up to you what kind of plants you want outside you can research there and you know you could really get into uh the the design process and start researching uh different kind of plants i i did briefly look at uh obviously you know another thing that you need to do which i'm not going to do in this lecture because it's just going to take too long is we need to if if you really wanted to get this house done on a professional level you'd have to do separate model sheets for the windows and the door design and the thatching pattern and all that kind of things to 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 give it that uh to give it that uh to, to get in there but as i said we're just working i'm just trying to do this as quickly as possible this series to give you an overview on how uh how the process works now i'm just going to just very quickly put in a window here like this and i do have a window that i've looked at a window design that i looked at from google image search that i'm just going to throw in there okay so i'm just gonna throw in some crosses on either side then one there one there one there one there no not one there um yeah that's just leave it Okay, you can tidy it up later. We we we're not getting we're not doing any details here, okay? We we get the point, okay? I've got to be quick with this. Um it's I do not want these lectures to be drawing demos. I would rather them, you know, you you just get a feel and an understanding of it. You're not watching me, you know, uh expertly draft a a cottage. Right. So this comes here and then we're going to want a ledge on here you see how i'm using this uh stuff to just very quickly create the impression and also for story you know even for storyboard um you can also see like when you're working on environments and things like that um how if you understand these kind of little principles and understand about shapes and things that the drawing doesn't actually take that long okay if 
uh, to do something like this. It really doesn't, you know. And, you know, just scribble. You can be organic and you can still kind of get it right. Now, what I, what I like about this is this is kind of offset hair like this. Again, in the thatching that I can see from some of my Google image search examples. Right. I will clean these up a little bit more. Well, I already did. I already did. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm just reverse engineering this so you can see. Right. So we've got that. And there's just one more little thing that we need to do to bring this. Uh, not to, not one more thing, but we want to change texture on the building behind to make it interesting. Okay. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very lightly put in some guidelines there. And then I'm going to come in here and say, okay, well, this is again, this is not a texture that I'm just randomly making up from, uh, well, I'm randomly making up these stone patterns, but this is an actual from some of the Google image cottages that I've got of thatched cottages. Some of them are nicely stoned like this. And I think it's nice. It adds a little bit of a harder quality to the cottage. And, you know, depending on how adventurous you are with color, you can really make that come alive with that. So you can see how we've gone in there and we have just gone straight out and we've got a nice kind of thatched cottage from that. But we are not done on this. We are not done on this. Okay, because we we don't just want to think about the the cottage from um from a perspective of oh yeah that just the outside we want to think about the nature of the cottage's environment so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go onto google image search so let's open a new window and i'm going to go on to wolf paw print okay um and i think it might be nice okay that's a nice image that's a nice image I think it might be nice. What I think might be nice would be to um, to kind of secretly um, hint at a paw print in the uh, in the actual. Excuse me while I get my internet screen up. Hint at a paw print in the actual image. Okay, uh, environment. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just go on top and I'm just going to draw this freehand, this grid. Okay, I'm going to freehand a grid here like this. Let's come out. Let's let me just rotate this the other way. Okay, so again, I'm not really caring too much about you know, what what what's it like? What's the, you know, where's the horizon line? I'm not making a finished image i'm just creating an impression okay that'll do me thank you very much right so now i'm going to think about um creating that paw print pattern um around it so what what is what is it it's like it's something like this okay so we have something like this and of course the terrain is not completely flat so you can it's kind of liberal you can help it can help it and it's all kind of eyeballed so we've got this kind of shape here and then we'll we've got something here and we've got something here and something here and something here now this is very the reason I mean I'm working quick because I did say I did have a little think before I came online because it's very important you know that this I can be as quick as I can about the information. Now you see these two here really give me an idea of of the doorway of the path leading up to the doorway. Now I could have two bushes here or two tree stumps here and have a fence around it. So why don't we do that? Why don't we think about doing that? So let's just make that like that and let's go again. So I'm just going to to do my fence. I'm just going to do something like this. Okay um just scribble all around there so it's very very fast very 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 fast around there like this right that'll do me 
And again, I have a image of the fence that I, you know, it's kind of like a basket weaved fence that I that I I'm going to put around there. So that's kind of like something good that we can do. OK, so I'm going to put that fencing around there like this. OK. Right. So we can sort that out later and the this will kind of be the fence area here. Right. So then on then now I want to think about the uh the the pads and the the things like that so we could have a tree stump maybe coming here like this you know representing over on this side okay so I'm just drawing shapes okay so it's very subliminal it's not necessarily so obvious but as I said, this is just a starting point. If you really want something like this to work, you've got to do it a lot more than, you know, what I am doing it here. I'm just giving you ideas, things to think about, okay? And then here, maybe for these two pads, we want to think about the, maybe uh, have some bushes here like this, like that. And it's going to all be in like forestry, like, around uh, anyway so it's not going to be so like laid out like this with nothing behind it but it's gonna it, it'll make it interesting i think so let's just get rid of that let's get rid of that and let's very quickly uh go in there and do something about it. i'm going what i am going to do because it's a little i'm not quite liking that i'm going to put that there and i'm going to put that there there and let's move these guys out just a little more in front like that this one should be that's the bigger pole okay and then what we can is we can have a kind of pathway coming in there like that okay right so let's make this yellow and let's just go in here and quickly just eyeball this okay so now we go on top of there and we just say okay again what i'm going to do is, is i'm going to pick out landmark points where my fencing is going to be rigged put together again i'm not focusing you know my my angle my view is not going to be 100 percent accurate but it's good enough for me okay it's good enough for me for what i'm doing right um, and of course, in this day and age, I'm not one of these people because even back in the day in uh, in hand drawn animation, um, even if you don't talk about the Disney classics like Rescuers and where they were rotoscoping cars and things like that, or Don Bluth American Tale where they built puppetry and model models to rotoscope like the Secret Weapon, um, or Beauty and the Beast where they built the ballroom in CG, or Basil the Great Mouse Detective where they uh, had the clock you know nowadays you can get perfect perspective by building simple models or representations in the computer and there's no real excuse because you have these programs I don't use them because I, I'm happy with my drawing skills but you have these programs like uh, grease pencil and blender and all that where you can do mock-ups okay of just the shapes like I've showed you the geometric shapes and then you can just draw over them to, to your heart's content and it'll save you time okay it will save you time uh, if you are that way inclined so I'm just gonna come around here and put my thatched fence on around there like that so there we go right now we're gonna have a little gate again I'm making it look like I'm really making this gate up on the fly and all that but no, uh, the the fact French design, the, the paw print design I'm making up on the fly, but the actual fact fence I've got reference for. So, um, you you know, reference is always your friend. OK, so now I'm just going to just going to throw in some lines here like this. OK, well, how are we doing for time? Thirty nine minutes. Not bad. Not bad. We've almost got one of the cottages 
out of the way. I'm going to do two. I'm going to do both so you can see that the, the, the next cottage design is, is going to be done in a very different process. So I'm going to be showing you two, uh, two different ways to tackle. This has been an easy one, okay? This one is a lot easier than the next one because this one, the shape of the actual cottage is based on, I'm being very liberal, I'm just creating a, a kind of woven fence here. Granny's got a woven fence, okay? So, um, she weaved it herself, you know, watching daytime TV. Okay, now, that's uh, that's just me being silly. Okay, right, so the... Um, this design based on the wolf's paw is very simple. The next design is going to be a little bit more uh, tricky, right? So that now the trees always, you know, just come in here, make these shapes, 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 have grass coming in here like this. These kind of tree designs, again, you really need to... We did look a little bit at Ridley Scott's Legend, but I haven't done for this. These kind of generic tree designs I've, I've just built in a memory of how to draw them through years of storyboarding, wood scenes and scenes in the woods over the years in my career. So it's just, you know, when you work on things, you just make mental uh, blueprints in your mind and it just makes it super, super... Like if you want to, you just like, you want, you want to have a little bit more life in your uh, bushes, just draw a few things like that. Also from going out, I love, love, you know, some of you know that I, I live in two places, England and New Zealand. I love taking my sketch pad in New Zealand and you just work out ways of sketching nature and, and, uh, and, and trees and bushes and things um, with your pen. I always sketch with pen um, in, a, in, in a way so that you remember and you just make more informed shape choices when you do these things. Okay, so now we're going to indicate the path a little bit here like that. Okay, right, so let's delete that and see what we've got. Okay, so here is our initial uh, very quick idea of uh, our design. Okay, let's make that, um, let's turn that into that color so you can clearly see it's a bit strong. Let's leave it like that so you can see. So we started with the shape of a wolf's foot, okay? Um, and we've said, okay, well, the wolf's foot has created a paw print in the ground, and that's how we've created a, a little bit of environment design here. And oopsie, we have designed our, our cottage, grandma's cottage. Um, let me just go in there because it's just bugging me a little bit, just... Put a few dots in there to make that sit nicer so we've got grandma's cottage okay but we're going to do another cottage design uh just to show you how to do something a little bit more if you're going to tackle more complicated shapes you need to think about them in a in a little bit more complicated complex way so i'm going to show you how we can go about doing that next um but before i do so um let me go and um, let me just save this in case it doesn't crash, uh, create a new layer, uh, thing. And let me just go and, uh, have a look at, uh, people online and see what they are going on about. Um, I have arrived. I'm glad you've arrived. Um. 2020 quantum animation absolutely the house with the chicken legs is based off a russian folktale Ooh, interesting hello i'm only 11 minutes hey roger wade how are you doing um the google demonetization alt f4 traffic off the roof roof looks so good whether it's hay or moss I thank you vietnam flashback um red fox mike powers ryan bowles having to hide in the warehouse for a minute to catch to watch the stream awesome Oh, oops, found by. Okay, he got found. Um, time practice experience. Mithril practicing the correct thing. <laughs> there you go. Hello, just saw it now. Always when I'm doing the exercises. Hey, Deruji, how are you doing? I'm studying fire at the moment, frame by framing. Hunchback. Awesome. Maybe study Fantasia as well. Um, Night on Bald Mountain. The special effects animation in that is second to none. It still amazes me how they do that. Um... 
Red Fox, thank you. How do you guys animate fire and water? Look, it's all timing. I'm, I'm in the middle of a lecture at the moment doing this, so I'll come back. Octavio, if you know how to animate bouncing balls and you know how to arc, uh, you know, you understand timing, arcing, slowing in and slowing out. Just study the material and look for slowing in and slow out and look for shapes and just follow it. So Jung's practicing. Oh, I just came in. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Rachel Miller. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, I shall go buy Fantasia. Absolutely, you must buy it, Travis. It is a must own. The first Fantasia especially is a must own. Okay, uh, right. So that's the first cottage out of the way based on a wolf's foot. So our next cottage, what if we want to do something more complicated? What if we want to do something based on a wolf? Okay, so why don't we do that? Right, but first and foremost, if we're working on, we're going to, I'm going to change it up a bit. I'm going to do a design based on, um, why did I do that? I want to use a blue. I'm going to do a design based on like a, just a side view. And then we're going to take that side view and try and translate it out there. So, um, how many do I think I'm going to need? I think I'm going to need nine. So let's just go one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine okay one two three four five six seven eight nine see i'm making myself a little grid here and you'll see why okay so i'm getting technical but not too technical look i'm not even measuring or drawing properly okay then i'm gonna probably want four I'm gonna probably want to break this into four one two three four there we go so that's probably the size of the shape that i'm looking at so uh, I'm just going to make one and then I'm going to do this really quick. Okay, because I can't even be bothered to get the, my ruler tool out. I really can't. I really, really can't. So I'm just going to do this. Okay, then I'm going to just get this and I'm just going to go control C, control V. And I'm going to move you up there. Let's see, you don't want to paste. Then I'm going to move you down there. Okay, All right, that's that. Now we'll go control C, control V. Okay, and that's that. I really, you see, I despise getting technical. This is about the most technical that I'm going to get. Okay, so control C, control V. Okay, that's that there. I'm not really too fussed about it all lining up. Just something that's that, that'll, that'll give me enough. To go with okay i'm not even i'm sure there's a way that you can do this properly but obviously i don't know it because i haven't really done this i don't really do this that often okay i just want a grid and that'll do for me one two three four five six seven eight okay and then what i'm gonna do we'll just um what i'll do is i'll tell you what i'll do you see this is the hardest part of this for me making this grid <laughs> there we are nine that's it that's the grid shape that i want okay so we've got nine there that'll do for me it's not even perfect okay let's let's skew it a little bit and make it a little bit perfect now <laughs> okay right so we're not this is all going to be discarded anyway okay but i'm going to have that in there let's make it a little bit of a lighter blue okay i'm going to have that in there and you're going to see why i'm doing this you're going to see why I'm doing it this way, okay? Because I think the more complicated your shapes are, the more uh, when you want to make a quick organic drawing, it'll just be better to have a, some kind of idea. Right. So let's make a new vector layer. Now, on to our drawing. Um, so I'm going to think about, uh, I'm just going to make a wolf's body, okay? So I'm going to think about the wolf's, typical anatomy here okay so his rib cage would be here his head would be here his nose and face maybe i put his head a bit lower i think i think maybe maybe depends depends right uh i don't want to focus on the grid see the grid is already making me think technical let me just go in there and draw my wolf okay so i'm gonna come in here and i'm gonna have his rear leg is gonna be here like this okay you see how the grid this grid let's screw the grid i'm going to turn that grid off and i'll make the wolf match the grid <laughs> okay the grid is for the house okay right 
There we go. That's a lot better. Turn that off. That's nice. Okay. Right. Now then, now then, now then. So we're going to have the shoulder blade hair, the humerus hair, the radius and ulna hair, and the foot hair like this. I don't even need this wolf to be a particularly accurate wolf, but you know me. I like getting things anatomically correct, even though I'm not even going to be using the anatomy. You're going to see that this is just superfluous, but I can't help it. Everything I do has to be done um, in a certain way. I, can't, I just can't help myself. Okay, so here we have this hair like this. And the tail we're going to bring down here like this. And the head, okay, the head is going to be a skull is going to come up here like this with this and we're going to bring this here like that okay there we go right there we have a rough kind of wolfish like body okay so let's put out get our grid and let's make him kind of fit on that grid okay so let's put him in there and bring him down just a little bit right so I have my wolf um, hair like this and I want to think about um, making him into a, a house, okay? How can I turn this wolf body into, into a house design, okay? How can we do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to think of is um, I'm going to think of okay well his head is hair now obviously I've got this space up top I don't want to I don't want it to go too high so I'm gonna think okay well if his head is hair it might be nice if we kind of have have a block hair like this so the silhouette has to look like a wolf okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think well his body and his legs maybe go up to hair um, so I'm going to have something like this. Okay. Let's have something like this. On here like this. Okay. So we've got this. Now, um, what we can do is we can have a chimney here to represent his ears. Okay. That's interesting. We can have a chimney to represent his ears. Now, remember this thatched house that I saw. I'm going to bring it in again because I loved it. Okay. Look at the design of this thatched house. The way it goes down at the back and all that in there like that. Absolutely thought that was absolutely amazing. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down here to represent his neck. And then I'm going to bring this down here. Okay. Maybe there'll be a little room so we can think about grandma, grandma locking kids in the cupboard there. I don't know. <laughs> so then there'll be a little room here like this and there like that okay and then that'll be the thatching going off to the tail and I'm thinking here just out of interest to make this look like the wolf's nose okay we could have a little kind of um, walkway okay coming out here um, on a kind of like bridge kind of effect like that so we've got something like this and if I, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wolf guy, edit, cut drawing object, and I'm going to paste him on the grid now, edit, paste drawing object. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to, no, let me get the grid now, <laughs> edit, cut drawing object, and paste that on the background. So I'm going to turn the wolf off now, and then what I'm going to do, just so you can see what we've got, just so we can make it a little bit tidier, is I'm going to get my block tool, okay? And I'm just going to make a shape here like this. I'm going to make a shape here like this. And I'm going to make a shape here like this. And a shape here like this. And a shape like this, okay? And then I'm going to get a line tool like this. And, oops, we forgot our little square. Because this is important when you want to plan out the to do other drawings actually get off and do drawings of the house this is super important okay uh that we you you have a good understanding of your what it is you're trying to do and then when you start drawing you know when we did this one 
it was very easy okay i showed you a very easy fun way but when you want a more complicated house believe me this is a really nice way to go about doing it okay so now what i'm gonna do is i am going to now let's just block all of this guy in and there you see the this the shittiness of doom boom it's telling me this line won't close yeah you stupid i can't st that that's why yeah anyway right okay there you go i did that for effect okay to show people on the stream just how irate software can make me sometimes it's just how stupid <laughs> it is okay there you go and i've had to end the stream because i've got a big crack in my cintiq screen there we go. <laughs> right there we go right okay so right anyway that's our silhouette okay not quite wolf like but it's a little bit it's edging towards that okay it's we're, we're getting a feel for that now i'm gonna i'm gonna make that a, a sort of lighter kind of pink so we can draw on top of it okay so now we can get creative we can get a little bit more creative okay so let's save that so what i'm thinking here okay on here uh this could be like a a tower in the cottage okay coming here like this and this will then enable the actual cottage area okay so the thatching will come up here just like we had there like this and we're going to have some thatching up there and the chimney we're going to have a chimney here like this we're going to have two chimneys we're going to see we're going to do a 3d drawing of it like this in a minute but we need to plan what it is we're drawing first so you can re really get really imaginative with this stuff so now the thatching is going to come down over it like this okay over here like that and then we're going to create more kind of thatching on this side here so we're getting more like a we're giving it more of a texture okay coming off the side here like this right and the grid okay i'm gonna move that on top for a minute so i can give myself an idea of where i'm going to put my windows and doors okay so this is going to come somewhat here and what i'm going to have here representing the legs i think we can have some pillars okay um we're going to have one on this side and we're going to have one here okay but then the tower is going to end here like that yeah i'm going to have the tower ending there like that and then this is going to be this portion of the house coming in along here like this right and then here we're going to have the thatching coming down all the way to the floor like that now then now then in here what i'm thinking is we are going to have we can have a window in this one and then we can have our door in this one and then in the middle one of here we can have our window in that one so let's turn our grid we don't need our grid anymore we've kind of roughed out what we wanted okay so here we're gonna have our door now our door is gonna be something like this okay uh, with a little door handle we're gonna put in our door on top and our window again get your rulers out get your whatever is out if you want to be super um uh accurate but this is just giving me a plan for when i do my uh my next drawing okay which again will be done in a more organic way it'll be done in a way that um in a way that i just showed you how i did the other one but we're going to be utilizing elements of that grid and you'll see why you'll see why the grid was necessary okay the grid what was that tron daft punk tron track where jeff bridges talks about the grid i don't know but anyway it's very important grids are always important to storyboard man okay so let's just color that in okay that beam's a little bit thin we can make this one just as thick as that okay now on here we're going to have another bit of that kind of arched way thatching that we had last time here like this you see why I, and i might bring this thatching lower 
to give it that wolf like you know the way the underbelly comes here and the legs there like that anyway subtle stuff subtle stuff so then this will come up here now we'll have a uh we'll have that walkway this could be like where the grandma goes at night i don't know i'm just making this up you know don't take it too seriously it's just more like an idea for the concept take take what i'm saying seriously in terms of story and concept but my suggestions they're just made up on the fly so that bridge could be where grandma goes at night to turn into a big mother wolf herself i don't know okay right so who knows okay right so then and then here we're gonna maybe think about the texture being a little bit different on this side to vary up our texture of the environment okay so i'm just gonna very quickly make this i might do this sketch nicer uh, for the thumbnail or something or for an instagram uh amb social media stuff i don't know but at the moment it's serving its purpose for what we've we're doing here okay so there we are let's um let's just make that uh, a bit of a stronger color there like that so you can see how we've kind of now got a an idea of how we've taken a, a a wolf's body and we've kind of put a a suggestion of of a house based on a wolf's body's design um it'll maybe give you uh some idea of how to do that now what we're going to do is we are going to look at that we're going to refer to that as we go about making our our next image so what was it was what it was nine wasn't it it was nine there so when i do this one i'm just going to do something like this okay same way same way that we did the last one but i'm going to rely a little bit more on my grid than before so i'm going to divide this into nine you can see it's all freehand i'm not being crazy about it i'm not really trying to do a full-on uh architectural drawing okay one two three four five six seven okay eight nine there we go right so i'm kind of happy with that now how many now what i'm what i think i'm going to do is, is i think i'm going to divide this house into three blocks into thirds everything for me is halves and thirds okay <laughs> so there we go right so very quickly i think before it gets too messy is i'm going to get my line tool and i'm just going to go here and i'm going to go here and i'm going to go here i'm not even getting a square and morphing that square because the minute i start getting caught up in getting my perspective really really good is one two three four five six seven eight nine that's the only thing i'm interested in my 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 size so i can get my house kind of the way i planned it to be but the minute i get too caught up in trying to get perspectives and things i'm gonna lose it i'm gonna lose the flow of my drawing and what i'm trying to do okay so i'm not interested right not interested so now i'm gonna look at this so i'm gonna say okay well my house is gonna be like this it's gonna cover all of this area here okay it's going to cover or it's covering all of this area and then we're going to have actually that's wrong this this is not going to be here and this is not going to be here and then this bit is going to be the bridge okay so now i'm going to now think okay well this is our shape okay this is our shape and it's going to come up one level okay so this is one level right like this this is C, not even trying, not even trying, okay? I'm more using my brain work to get my design. Now, this is the next level. This is the roof level, okay? This is the roof level, okay? It's going to come here. Now then, now we have another level here, okay? Which is going to be the tower, okay? Which is going to be an extra level up here. And that's going to sit along here like this okay so this is where our tower level is going to sit you see how this grid thing and really familiarizing myself with the grid has 
helped me do this a little bit easier than you know it's not 100 percent accurate but it's nice it's organic it's it's organic it's flowing and i'm getting some kind of uh uh drawing out of it okay now here i'm gonna think about okay well we're gonna have to have now i'm gonna just improvise a little bit here okay so i'm gonna put a little bit of a cube on here right there and we're gonna have our little kind of chimney uh two chimney ears on there like that okay so that's giving me an idea now i need to think about look how this ends this is one square okay so i've got to look at that that's one square that one square comes up here like this so that gives me the location of this thing here which is going to come down on the back like this it's very important that i get my shape right okay is going to be here and what i think just out of interest to improvise a little because otherwise that's going to be like a window i'm going to move this up just a little bit and cheat it okay it's all cheated anyway the perspective isn't accurate anyway so you know but i'm going to do that for a reason because i want this walkway to be in a kind of like door instead of a window okay so i'm going to put this here and I'm going to put the walkway, which is going to come along here and along here. Okay. And you see, I'm missing the middle. So this is going to have to come like this. Okay. There, like that. Oh, it, was, it wasn't, wasn't too bad. Wasn't too bad. Okay. So this is going to be my walkway. Okay. And... I'm going to dress up all the inaccuracies with leaves and hanging things on that walkway uh, because as I, I don't think I showed you the image. I've got a cottage that's got a lot of creepers and crawlers on it, you know, um, doing things like that. So now next thing I need to figure out is my windows. OK, so I've got this hair and this hair. So this is where our um, one, one, two one two three you see this is where our beam is okay and the other beam is two away from the last one two so two away from the last is our other beam is going to be somewhat here you see where we're going with this how we're figuring all this out it's quite simple so now the window um sits here the door will sit here that's not quite right is it so here you can see where we have kind of screwed up because of the perspective but that's all right it's giving me enough of a guide here like this so one two uh and that's on the three then we've got the window in here okay i'm going to make this line here to represent the window the window in here then we got a space here and i'm going to half the door here because it's just not looking right so there's a bit, little bit of a mix of eyeballing it, okay? Either stick to the grid. If it doesn't look right, just eyeball it. Leave it, you know, leave this technical stuff to the technical man, in, I, I always say, unless, unless you want to do that kind of thing. And you can see it's not hard to do if you really work out your grid properly, but I'm on a live stream here. I'm just whacking it out. So it really, I really can't be asked. Okay, this is a little bit thinner, this side. So I'm going to put this here like this. And this window is going to be here like that. Right, there we go. So now what I'm going to do before I start drawing on top is I'm going to make this a little bit clearer for me to work with. Okay, so let's make this this color let's get our line tool let's make our line tool just that little bit slimmer so we can work with it okay now um i'm going to come here i'm going to do this i'm going to do this i'm going to do this and this is going to make the drawing a lot easier okay so one thing that i should have done before i did that was i should have done this so this is going to come down like this and this square is coming up here like this so this is coming in line with this thing here like this so we're going to have that more that will be more like that 
right and then that's going to be going straight along here like this just along there there we go now we can go and delete that and make that faint now we can get our line tool and make this start to give us a guide to draw on top you see very very quickly i'm able to do this um, this is going to be here somewhat here like this and anything that i want to cheat and make pop a bit more in the silhouette i can because i'm not limited i'm going to just make the chimneys flat like that because i'm focusing on the outline perspective here i'm going to have this here going to have this here gonna have this here and this here and this here this here this here this here let's already just second guess what we're doing just very casually like that then we're gonna have one two three so it makes just drawing a lot cleaner a lot easier when you want to draw on top you've got something that kind of looks like it works okay it's just kind of quick and it's easy and it looks like it works and that's all that's all you need to worry about if you want to get your design out there quick okay and i'm going to put that there like that right now oh, another thing that i need to do um windows and doors like this 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 and these pillars i'm gonna bring out like this there we go sorted so i'm gonna delete that and now we're going to have fun on top of this guy here. So then, I'm going to begin. Let's begin with let's begin with our thatching. Okay, I love beginning with the thatching because it kind of unites everything. Okay, so let's begin putting the thatching in. The thatching would kind of come here as well, over on this side and it will come kind of down over here this side would be we would just see a little bit coming i need to make my brush a little bit fatter and this would come over on there now we need to think about the where it's going it's going on top of this pillar here okay so if i look at this pillar here i'm gonna imagine it coming down over there like this then we're going to have it coming straight and we want it overshooting the door somewhat so coming down so i'm really just texturing layering carpeting on top of this thing giving it a feel okay and then here's where it's going to be coming down over on top of that like this and then we'll see a little bit of the house there like that okay so there we go I'm kind of happy with that. So the mapping is done out like this. I'm really going to just rush through this, as I said. I'm trying to work as quickly as I can uh, to get my points across uh, so that you, I can just hopefully set you on, an, on, a, on a good direction where you can feel that you're going to, you know, it doesn't have to be that hard. Environment design, location design, you can have a little idea have a little play and you know even if it, it it's just about using your imagination really and making simple geometrical shapes bringing them bringing you know like you look at clouds and you see shapes in clouds you can do that with geometry too um, and you can start making interesting little houses based on anything that you want so um, now I've got this pillar kind of coming here on here these kind of pillars coming in front of the house a little bit we want kind of there like that and then we're going to unify the floor with the house you see how the little bit of also the environment the setting this is in the forest so we can be quite liberal with what we're doing with the um, with the with the doors and the floor so now we're going to bring some hard edges okay in there like that let's bring it 
bring it in away from the window a little bit let's put a bit of a door handle on there and just bring those down again we're going to maybe put some window ledges add some depth and dimension to this thing um, we don't want it to be too uh, flat okay so this is this is the way you can as i said you know when you're working on a project even if you're not confident about uh environment and prop design i just want to show you just how if you just think outside the box a little bit and think like a think like a filmmaker think like an like an artist and don't allow the technical aspects of like i'm not very good at perspective i don't do perspective and all those kind of things get in the way of your imagination um, because really uh, animation is all about imagination and so is filmmaking and even if it's not uh, particularly your strong point you will be able to uh, to have something out of it now what I think I'll do to make this side a little bit more interesting is, is I think I will put another mark here and change the pattern of the brickwork because we want to change it to this kind of texture that we had here okay so let's just bring this out here like this let's make this a little bit lumpier kind of line make it stone mason kind of stuff this we'll have there like this and this is coming back to this side of the house right so then again i'm going to put a few simple guidelines here okay again i'm being very very just liberal with it um and i'm going to start putting in my stone patterns on top okay so you can do all this kind of stuff and you could see you know it's not as i as with everything as with what i've said about this project all the way through you know you can you can't this kind of thing is not done in a day or or how long have we been streaming one hour okay it's not really professionally you wouldn't do this but hopefully i'll give can give you an idea okay that i say professionally you wouldn't do this but sometimes when you're a super talent and you're just hired to work on stuff really quickly um, you can as you're seeing here knock out stuff that looks pretty decent um, but this is just you know if you're work if you're wanting to work on a big multi-million if you're if you're that kind of inclined then you got to spend a long time getting this stuff um, more research getting expert you know specialist help and getting you know those kind of people in to do those things but i'm talking to people who are independents okay i'm talking to people who are wanting to uh make their own projects and i'm trying to give you a sense of professional uh let's put a little curtain in here kind of ripped little curtain in there professional kind of environment uh professional workflow for that how you can bring that to your work okay so I'm going to put these railings on here and I'm going to be quite careless with them because I'm going to drape them in kind of flowers and things like that just to kind of uh, bring some sense of uh, some some I don't know a sense of the mythical fantastical I've always liked creepers I think it looks cool and draped flowers now these uh, these I'm going to have to look a little bit of what a the perspective i know i said don't care about the perspective but these are going to come here like this there we go okay you can even have um the steam coming out making it like that right so let's delete the geometrical shape so there you can see already you know we've got something but now what we can do is we can add some plants and creepers and things and you can add them all over the house but i'm just putting them around this uh these steps to unify them with the drawbridge well it's not a drawbridge but with the thing because i didn't really think about it i just stuck it on there to look like the wolf's face again you know you really want to think about how that to make this actually 
sit on the architecture a lot nicer than what I've done here. So I'm just using a little trick of adding like drapes and creepers and things like that. But you want to, oh yeah, that's right. What I missed here, okay, is the change in direction. Okay, so we want to have a little bit of the wall, under wall of this side showing here. Okay, which I'll, let's just bring this line out a bit. Ah, uh, that's a bit scrappy. Let's bring that out a bit. There we go. Right. Much nicer. Okay. So, now then, just like we did with the, um, just like we did with the previous design, the, uh, the paw print one, we want to think about, um, the, how, where it's sitting. So how about a wolf in the full moon? Okay. Really simple, easy thing, a wolf in the full moon. So how about, um, again, I'm not going to kill myself. Let's just do this. Okay, let's just do this. Kind of get the dimensions. I don't really, not really that interested. Okay, and now uh, I'm going to get my ellipse. Okay, I'm going to make an ellipse, All right, and I'm going to bring that ellipse here and I'm going to think about skewing it, <laughs> for all time's sake, Travis, there we go, there you are, and I'm going to just copy and paste that ellipse up there, up there like that, we don't want it too high, I'm going to have a hedge, a layer of hedge all around the, um, the the house the cottage so now i'm just going to bring that in okay let's move that let's think about the width of our hedge okay that'll do that'll do nicely it's good enough for me right and then what we want to do um is we want to have this hedge having a little bit of um, this is going to be the pathway okay it's coming here so we want to have a little bit of a block here because there's going to be a gate here so then we're going to have a little bit of a block on this side and the rest will all be organic hedge making it all look nice and easy okay um let's go in and let's use our blue again so let's go in and just do this okay just so i know where my surface line is okay and do this right now i can delete that because it's getting on my nerves uh, oh, oh wow yeah I want to delete all the yellow it's getting on my nerves and I am going to go and um, make this a light gray make this a slightly darker gray make that the darker gray and I'm just gonna draw on top with my little hedges my little hedge okay um, so actually what I do, what I think I will do is I think I don't want to overlay. Overlaying is nice, but I don't want to because it's it's a little bit, uh, it involves more work and I don't want to detract from the house. So I'm just going to do that. Overlaying would make it look a lot nicer, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. Let me just come in here. Okay. Let's make our little kind of hedge shape. Okay. And let's keep putting that in there like that so you see it's a simple little guide how easy it is how straightforward it is let's have a look at the chat I really like the wooden beams it adds a lot of textures thank you I'm back this is looking great one of those long-haired dogs I like the wolf body design one looks more like a chihuahua when I just came to the video he made the wolf and said let's turn the wolf into a house and I was so confused there you go awesome awesome there you go. Well, what we're doing today to those people joining uh, 
the stream late as we are continuing the series of AMBA Real Animator Freeview, um, which is my free uh, kind of uh, YouTube course, I would say. It's not really a course. It's kind of like a an insight uh, is the best way of putting it. Because for me, courses should always be step by step as far as I'm concerned. Um, so this is a kind of uh, real animator free view where I'm kind of giving you an insight and helping you with these kind of professional tips and professional um, tutorials on ways to go about making your... Uh, personal projects whether you're making a game or whether you're making a film or a short or a TV series or you're trying to put together something or even a comic book um, this kind of design process uh, before you actually start diving in and doing the uh, making the actual product the finished production going into production this pre-production phase is very very important and it doesn't have to be boring a lot of people just want to just jump in there you know and I, I tr I'm trying to do what I can for my YouTube viewers but I think some of you just are not going to really enjoy AMB material because no matter what I do I get questions like please put please teach me how to make animated animation from A to Z well in a way I'm kind of doing that here to whoever keeps asking me that I can't do any more than what I'm doing here you know this is not something where where you just you know if you want to do it well you know I'm doing this I'm I'm rushing this I'm knocking this stuff out super super quick it's not that I'm really doing some really solid work here I'm like in a couple of hours you know on a live stream I'm I'm knocking out designs and things like that that's not how you do it a to z in the in the industry you know you gotta you gotta really put your labor of love into it you've got to really put more thought and effort into it but i'm doing this as quickly as i can to try and show you guys how you can kind of how to do it a to z okay uh but that doesn't mean you know if you want to watch software tutorials this is the last place on earth you want to be okay so if you're going to ask me about how to make things work in your pro tablet or your this and that, this is the last place in the world. This is animation. Okay, that is an animation. That's tech stuff. That's that's um, technician stuff. Now I'm just going to put in some stones, I think, here on this side. And we're going to be kind of done on this, you know, I think. Uh, so one hour 27 minutes in not bad we've got two cottage designs based on ideas of uh, of a wolf a wolf a wolf's paw print a wolf in the full moon you know all those kind of things so you got to think obviously this thing is going to be in a forest okay so you got to think about the kind of trees which we did in this image here you know the kind of trees that would be you know a clearing in the forests of you know you, you got to have a enough of an idea so when you're storyboarding of the geography of what's happening right so there we go that is our uh our design there very quickly just to see we started off with a a wolf kind of body right then we uh, built a house shape on there to come up with this kind of idea and now we have a design okay we have a design of a cottage that we can think about you know if we really wanted to do this properly we would need to have spend time researching the design of the stone patterns we would need to spend time doing the de design of the windows which i'm not doing on this stream okay i'm not doing on this okay i'm just showing giving you an idea how the beam works okay the thatching pattern okay what kind of uh flowers and growths are on this okay how this looks some of you remember that stream where i was talking with luke uh, my uh, art director and production designer friend this is pretty much what he does okay um, he spends while I'm 
working out story shots and angles. He's working his guts off doing this kind of stuff and going into real details, working especially on CG, working with the modelers, providing the modelers, the paint department, the texture department, providing them the information that they need to build the model and, you know, all those kind of things by doing drawings and illustrations of all those kind of things. So there you go. So Jong An says it looks comfy. That's exactly what we want. Um, you know, uh, with with a with a again all depending on the color how you put it, but with a slight wolf like undertone to it. So awesome! It's been an absolute pleasure doing this particular lecture. I think it gives you uh, an insight into into something that isn't often talked much about. Maybe some game uh, game in game. I don't know what game degrees are like. I know that animation degrees are awful, but game design, maybe people doing game design might have learned some of this kind of stuff because I see a lot of game designers with cool little environment drawings and things that they have. Uh, so that is the, um, that is the uh, design of that. So I'm just going to have a quick look at the chat and then I think I'm going to look at the wall um, of the real animator training uh, growth development and progress group um, one more time if some of you are coming late uh, uh, I've, the, while I'm getting the opening up the Facebook page the, well, the commission that I gave a real animated training library member Aaron who worked his way through the uh, basic archive the intermediate archive and the anatomy archive he really impressed me with his work so I assigned him a clean up a uh, job uh, and he cleaned up some of my animation and this is this is what so, it looks like are you gonna join so the library we go. so are you gonna join the library and you can't even get more subtle than so, that with what she's are saying you so you gonna join the library you know do the right thing go and join the so, right library people she's asking you, you so join nicely the library? okay <laughs> there, there you go right so now let's move on to um to our growth development and progress group i know that roger wade has posted some stuff and i want to talk to roger he's a new library member so i want to uh, have a little word with rogers about some of the stuff he's been doing roger is very talented he's a fellow brit and um but there's a, a, something i want to say to him that um which which will in, give him an insight into timing before i do that i'll have a quick look at the chat uh, the lesson, this lesson opened my eyes a lot. I kept thinking that I couldn't get any of my environment concept art for my project done because I'm my, of my poor skills in them. Now I can, now I can see I can get some of my ideas out. You see, thank you, Life Fantasy. Life Fantasy is a real animator training library member, and she's getting. You know, this is also in my staging course in the intermediate archive. We go into a lot more detail. It does. It's not as pretty as this though, Life Fantasy. Because we really go into a lot more detail, and you know, uh, it's not as it's not as pretty as this, but it's a lot more detailed. So um, the uh, the thing is, you know, I love the, you saying that because it's just a testament. Because I really want to give value for free on Real Animator Freeview. Um, I want people to, you know, just people to just get better at hand drawn animation, um, uh, whether they're in the library or not. You know, so uh, obviously. It's impossible to go through those strict courses on YouTube because the material just wouldn't survive. It never did on YouTube. But I think people are going to like this one. Um, I joined the library over the summer. Vincent, awesome. Well, I wonder if you've posted in this in this group. I've now opened up the group. So um, you're more than welcome to post in here. Um, I, 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 I try to give feedback when I can. It's not obligatory because the library is kind of self-explanatory. But it's just good because even if I don't get to give you feedback, there's so many other people on here who've gone through those courses. And students like Aaron, who are now, you know, I consider Aaron a real animator. He, you know, I hired him to clean up something. To, I hired him to clean up a scene of my wife, it's a character that I'm so precious about. And he did a stellar job. I think I've got his original line. You see it in color. Color is the best uh, because it, when you see it in color, you can really understand um, how it works in color, how it's blocks of color. So if you so, look at Aaron's, no, this is the color thing. So if you look at Aaron's line work. So 
Are so you this is just his line. This is, he's taken the line. He's cleaned up so, my animation. Are you going to join the library? Super, super nicely. And I'm super, so, super proud. Are you going to join um, the library? And it's just such a testament to, so, to somebody who's worked through those exercises. Um, if anybody can't remember, the rough so, animation looks I like this. Okay. Library? Okay. So, going to join the... There we so, go. So, the library? So... Are you going to join the library? And that's actually in one of the so, courses uh, the, uh, in the library, the dialogue course. Right, so awesome. So, um, oh, Octavio has posted something here. I'm going to start with Roger because I know he's online. I think Octavio is online as well, but I wanted to uh, to help Roger. These are good exercises, Roger, but I want to, I want to stress something. Uh, you haven't done anything wrong, Okay. So this, these, these are these. You look like I know that you you will not do these very wrong because you really impress me like nobody's business with the free stuff, you know. Um, and Roger's also got I think Roger's a motion graphics animator and he's a he's a professional illustrator. I think he might have done stuff for the BBC. I was looking at his website. Um, so he's a he's a Roger's a pro as well. So I'm really chuffed about that. I didn't know he was. I just thought he was just a young guy from Britain. But then I, I saw a link to his website and it turns out he's been working. So awesome, Roger. Fantastic. You learn something new every day. Um, but uh, so you, these are good. But I want to point something out to you uh, that I remembered when I looked at. So we've got the basic bouncing ball. This is fine. OK, fine. You've done this one before. Lovely. Now, this is the one I want you to think about. OK, in the library test, Roger, um, in the library test, I don't work with such a big ball on this one. Now, you you followed the library timing for this particular exercise, Roger. But because the ball is bigger, the space between the ball and the ground, the space between the ball and the ground is less. Okay, so those slow in and slow outs are making it are making it float a little bit. OK, it's nothing to do with your timing. You, I know that you would have followed this chart. You understand this chart, but you can see how the size of the ball can affect the, the quality of the test that you're doing. And the size of the ball is actually something to bear in mind because when you're working, because it's to do with the height of your arcs. OK, so here you've got your arc pattern. The arcs are nice. I can see the arcs are kind of nice. If I look at these arcs a little bit, Roger, one thing that you're doing with these arcs here. Um, one thing that you're doing with these arcs, and it's a common mistake, even I say it in the test, I say, you know, there's no escape from a bouncing ball. Because when we're looking at a pretty woman fluttering her eyelashes going, are you going to join the library uh, with her breast squeezing on the counter and her hair going over her face and her hand resting? There's, there's so many things for us to get distracted when there's this the little bouncing ball going up and down, our eye is going to be like, you'd better work, son of a bitch. And I've got my eye. If you, if you do one thing wrong, I'm going to slap you down. That's why I love the bouncing ball. Because, you know, if there's one thing that makes me sweat when I'm teaching animation, it says, damn, I'd better get my bouncing ball right. OK, <laughs> because, you know, there ain't no hiding. There is no use in hiding. OK, so the thing is, and I mentioned this about the arcs. Now, we got to remember there's forward momentum. So if anything, you, you don't have you follow the library tutorial. But what you've done, what I can see in the arc is we're getting a lid. I'm exaggerating here, Roger. It's, it's not as bad. But we're getting this kind of thing, okay? As if this, as if there's a force fighting it this way. Now, this isn't a physics tutorial. I always say, screw the physics. This is about timing and arcing. But we do have to kind of think a little bit about the natural path of action, okay? So if we look at your arcs just a little bit here, we can little bit, little bit see that happening, okay? So there's two things going on. There's the there's the size of the ball and the distance of the ground in, in, in relation to the, the, the size of your arcs and your... See, this is why this law, this is the law of arcing, okay? You've got the law of arcing and you've got the law of slowing in and slowing out, 
and the law of timing. That's what this is about. When you do the ball going up and down on the spot, that's just timing, slowing in, slowing out. When you're doing this, you're introducing a new th a law, a law called orking. And it's not, the orking is one of the most fundamental things that we do in animation and how we slow in and slow out of those orcs. That's where the real magic happens. So getting the orc is no, is not an easy thing by by any stretch of the words so this is why i'm telling you this roger i know you're going to soak up this information and you're going to go to down you're going to go to down on it and i know you know probably know a little bit about orking from motion graphics if anything or motion graphics cg animators they deal with something called a curve editor where they go to clean out the bumps in the curve and the higher the curve the the more the slow in okay the 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 flatter the curve the the greater the faster the distance but they so cg people kind of understand timing a little bit in that way but you know arcing is a little bit different okay arc is the arc of motion in this case but we can then think about okay well it's kind of going to be the same deal okay we can maybe push it a little bit there but then this is going to be a little bit stagnant looking at this arc so if we look at our arc okay we look at our arc, we can time accordingly. Now I teach you the most basic thing on this exercise, just a simple arc, even kind of arc like that. But if we have one difference in there and we keep this timing, it's going to create this kind of effect, different kind of effect on the arc. So it makes a world of difference. So while this test is not that bad, Roger, it's quite, it's quite close. A few things are making it look a little bit off. Just those slight things. So you've listened. I can tell you've really listened to what I've said. And I can feel that first squash and stretch. It looks really nice. But the um, but the arcing kind of lets it down a little bit. So hopefully um, hopefully that helps you out there uh, with that. Uh, Vincent Williams. Vincent Williams. He just introduced himself. And there he is. Uh, Vincent, I hope you read this, you know, um, what with YouTube and Coppa and all that. I don't care. Look, I'm quite, I'm grateful for YouTube. I'm grateful for Facebook. You'll never hear me bitching about Zuckerberg or any of these people. They've given me an opportunity to help loads of people. And thank you. Thank you. Awesome. But uh, privacy laws, you know, um, maybe I, I might bitch and moan about the people coming down on that. I don't know. But ultimately, everybody's got a job to do. But privacy laws means that you need to be aware that if you join this group, I'm going to stream your posts on the wall. Otherwise, how can I review them? OK, how can I review them? OK, so. Um, so just be aware of that. Otherwise, th this group isn't going to work for you. Um, Roger's got the jumping ball. This one's a, this one's a sweet deal. This one's fine. As far as I'm concerned, Roger. Awesome stuff. Yep, that works. He's jumping. Okay, this one again, the little two scampers could be a little bit, again, I think it's to do with the size of the ball, you know, he's a, in my one he's a little bit more squirrel-like, but it's, you got the idea, you don't need to do it again, you've got the idea, look at the slow in, it's all working, we're adding some life to that ball now, good stuff. Uh, ball with weight, weight and texture, let's have a look-see, dum, yeah. You know what? It's a li yeah, that's better. That that's nice. The sec I think they were the same thing, but for some reason, the second one didn't seem to stick as much. Maybe it's because of the way the ball starts. It's supposed to. You know what kills this image a little bit? We if you have the first frame as blank, we need to see it suddenly appear. If we see it, if our if our eyes fixed on that little timing lesson, okay? If your eye is fixed on something, and then no matter how natural or whatever the timing is at the end. If we're looking at that for more than one frame, it's going to spoil this, okay? So if I put my hand, you won't be able to do this, but if I put my hand, maybe I might be able to, hang on, let me break this out and let me, let me try and make this super, super big and then drag, no, I can't do that, I can't, I can drag it so it's halfway off the screen, but I can't drag it so it comes on, off the top of the screen. So anyway, if I put my hand on top and hide the ball, it looks great. <laughs> okay, right. So um, the this is fine as well. Even in my test, I do suggest, I think I suggest, I always say you could always make it have one lighter bounce at the end. But I think you get the idea. Let's, let's not kill ourselves over this. It's a lighter ball. It's bouncing lighter. Nice stuff. So yes, good stuff. Oopsie. We go on and close that down. Um... Where is it? Let's uh, reopen the Firefox and let's open the chat. So that's Roger Wade's um, stuff out there. 
Would love some advice on what I've been working on for my personal project. Vincent W., I haven't seen your personal adv uh, project, but, you know, um, okay, I'll have a quick look, but uh, be prepared for the, the usual standard answer. Um, it's, you know, joining the library and then not relating it it's 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 a different thing from a personal i haven't seen your personal project but i'm just throwing it out there and i'm gonna have to give the usual spiel if it's what i think it is um i can't and again i was i've got other people's stuff to review here so just in future don't be like coming and posting while i'm online because that's you know it's not right because i've got other people's stuff to look at okay let's have a quick look at this See, the thing is, um, Vincent, I can't really comment too much about this because, because the usual things that I'm going to say here, these are, these are positions, these are poses, but from what I can see from how you're trying to get from this pose to this pose, okay, is you, you haven't really, you really need to do exercises in the library, okay? Now, many of you have heard this before, okay? But I've got, to, I've got to say it like this. You know, I have to. This is Vincent, or let's say you, okay? Because I don't, I don't want to. But I'm talking to you now, Vincent, okay? Now, you bought the library. The library, as you can see from people who are using it, is getting great results, okay? Getting you to do things good and correct, okay? So this is the path. Okay, all you have to do, Vincent, is walk it. Okay, seems quite easy, doesn't it? But no, what happens is, is your eyes start to look at personal idea. Okay, if you were learning to be a doctor, Vincent, okay, and you were having to learn how to dissect certain organs or parts and your eyes went but i want to i want to try and learn how to dissect a brain or i want to be a brain surgeon when i haven't even learned about the different parts of you know the skull and all this and that you'd be kicked out of med school because you'd kill someone okay now, people will say, how is that the same thing? It's very much the same thing. You know, you're still killing something here. You're killing. If you've asked me for feedback on how you can improve it, this is, this is mentor talk, okay? Some people, I don't mentor people because the reason I don't mentor people is they don't pay me enough. They, do, they can't afford me. And on top of that, they better da if they do afford me, they better damn well listen to everything I say 100% because this works. If they don't, sorry, that's why it ain't going to happen. But I'm going to talk to you one-to-one -one mentor talk, okay? The thing that's being killed here is your progress at animation, okay? That's being killed because your eyes are straying personal idea now i want to make this man getting off the ground good okay now how can i do that i'll go and there's nothing in the library that's specific to my personal idea so i will go and look at something else and i will try that and now i've come back to an amb stream and i've seen he's giving people feedback so i'm going to ask him what he thinks of my personal idea I don't like the sound of what he's saying. I'm sure there's another way. So I'm going to go another way to get to that destination. Okay. And maybe you'll find it. But I'll tell you what. Aaron's been only at this for two years. Okay. Some people life fantasy, you know, maybe two. Some people one year. Some people even less. Okay. Even less. And they're getting this. Some people have been doing this for 10 to 15, four or five years, this never getting anywhere. Why am I telling you this? Why am I telling you this? Okay, well, let's just look at one thing here. Okay, if you wasn't a library member, okay, I might not tell you this because 
because you wouldn't be able to look at the right information. But you've got the right information in front of you, but you're not looking at it. So if I go here and I go back to this, okay, the first thing I can see down here from this, this guy moving here, I'm not even going to talk, Vincent, about uh, what? Something went wrong. Get out. Piss off. Sorry, I hate it when technology screws me over. For some reason, it's not working. Okay? But I remember what I saw. I remember what I saw. It's working here. Okay? Now, I'm not going to talk about how he's smaller when he gets up. That's not what that that's not the that's that's what the noob would tell you. That's what the person on the 4chan forum will tell you. It's not the volume. Your drawings aren't right because they don't know any better. I'm going to tell you. Okay. Well, in the library we do this thing called a walk cycle and we focus on the hips of when a character walks, of how the hip rotates and you see the underside of the hip. Okay? When the character is got more weight on one leg and on the other leg and then what happens okay and then you learn it from the front view as well so you can get a better understanding of that why am i telling you about that well if your character is getting off the ground what's the reason you you can break him into as many sections as you like but if you don't understand okay hip tilting and hip hip rotation okay so this hip is higher than this hip so he's using this leg to push into the ground and this one is still going to be on the ground. And then when the next frame, okay, as that leg's standing, he's going to be putting more weight on the other side of the hip. Okay, so this thing is going to be rotating as he brings this foot up and then this one is more buckled. Okay, so you got pelvic rotation, which is what you do through the loads of different cycles that I spend ages focusing on just the legs. And then you'll have torso rotation. Okay? So if his torso is here on the floor, okay, let's talk about his torso on the floor. You see, there's there's too many things that need work. And and the reason why it needs work is, is because perhaps you haven't studied this stuff. Okay? But which which is all in the library. So if he's gonna get up, again it's the same thing. Which is, is he going to put more weight on this side? So then his torso is going to rotate here and it's going to torque with his, with his pelvis, okay? Which is going to be like this, okay? On the other side, okay? So his hands here and the head is going to be here like this, okay? So you're going to have pelvis and torso counter action, which is what you learn doing all those exercises vincent so i would love to be able to to say to you something that um is going to that you can do to move forward with this project but all i can say is is if you're happy doing this and this is what's making you happy then continue doing it vincent um but if you really want my opinion this is a little bit too advanced for where you are right now you know um that's what i would say it's maybe not what a college course would say it's maybe not what somebody else would say but i would say that to anybody who i was personally training one-to-one -one, you're trying to do too much too soon um so if your goal is to make a short film then maybe work on storyboard uh, and try and look at shots and make the shots out if your goal is to actually do a great piece of animation then you need to really work at understanding animation well in order to do that you need to really understand arcs see as he's standing up here he's not quite arcing right and this is all pose to pose and so he starts off a lot bigger on the ground and i you know the reason i'm mentioning it now is is in the key stages when he gets up he's a lot smaller so those key, key key frames extreme frames aren't quite working together in the in the post to post sense but um thank you for sharing that with me vincent um uh i believe i've 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 given you a really strong advice and 
I know that this kind of advice might be not the kind of advice that feels nice. It might be like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do bouncing balls. I don't want to do swinging pendulums. I don't want to. But then you got, you know, I can only liken it to the guy who sits here playing his video games, you know, with his drink in his hand, you know, You know, and he's sitting there playing and he's saying he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to go to the gym, you know, and he's moaning at everybody. He's moaning about why, why, why he hasn't, you know, been as successful in certain areas that he would have liked to have been. But he doesn't want to go to the gym. You know, he doesn't want to work out. You know, he should just have the great body. He should just have everything that comes with it. You know, it's not. That's not the way life works, you know. So he simulates it with his video games. He simulates it by playing video games of men with great bodies, kicking ass, getting the girl or whatever. And that's what he does, you know. Um, and I liken... There's different kinds of people who are trying to do animation. There are people who just want to have fun and they simulate it. They just do it the way they do it. And they simulate it and they get pleasure. But it's kind of a bitter, bitter, sweet pleasure. Then there are the people who really want to make it. There are people who will do whatever they have to do. Do whatever needs to be done. Okay? Um, like Life Fantasy, like Aaron, like Roger, like so many people who, who are, you know... And that's what I can say. It's like, I don't know if you're aware, aware of Vincent. You know, I've got... Pros joining the library, people coming from the industry joining the library. Why? You've got to ask yourself why. Because they're not good enough. They want to be better. Okay? They want to be better. This is why this place is called Real Animator Training. It's why it's called Real Animator Training. It's very important you understand why I gave it that name. It's real because it really works. Okay? And... People are coming to it because of that reason. So you have the power in your hands. But what it's all about is your personal attitude towards how you're going to do things. Okay? So hopefully you've taken that. I'm giving you much love with this, uh, not Roger, Vincent. I'm really trying to get through to you. Um, and hopefully you're going to take this as a positive and not me kind of saying, well, if you don't do it my way, then I'm not interested. Hopefully I've given you an insight into what the things of why this perhaps isn't quite working from what I see. And um, you've, you've got the know-how. You have the route to understand how to make it work. But you need to be aware that it's going to take time to do this stuff well. And it's better putting, it's better putting this stuff aside until you acquire the skills. Okay, one last thing before I move on to someone else. One last thing. It's like the champ. It's like a guy who's just started boxing. Okay? <laughs> when can I have my title fight for the championship of the world? You know, and his trainer's like, you know, you bum. You know, why? You, 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 if, if you go there... And you go against the champ right now. You might do well in your little bar fights or whatever. You know, you go and you fight the champ now. You're going to get KO'd. And that's, you know, you're not ready for that. So let's put it aside. Your dream, you know, that's your dream. That's what you're working for. But just put that aside right now. And then just train, my friend. Train and make it happen. Then go and knock the champ out. Okay, hopefully I've put it through to you in a kind of good way like that. And um, but thank you for sharing that. Uh, Vincent, thank you. Really great advice. I need to keep following. I'm glad you pointed out the walking side because uh, of time crunch. I haven't had a lot of time to do so. Thanks. Your life stuff has been pulling me away from my computer recently. So I'm making the most of my time on it now. Before it takes me away. I've finally done with the fourth follow through on overlap video. Just need to in between it now. I'm pretty sure that that's going to look absolutely 
outstanding life fantasy. And that's always one that people love. Uh, so when you share that, I can't wait to see you getting some love for that. Um, I've never done motion graphics, though. I thought you did, Roger. I can see the problem. We'll make the mental note. Motion gra I'm, I'm sure you've done some small animations in Dune Boom or some kind of After Effects or something. That's all called motion graphics now. Flash animation is now called motion. I'll make a mental note for the future exercises. Awesome. Right, so... Um, with the Vincent's little thing, I'm just going to look if there's anybody else who really needs... Octavio, I remember I promised Octavio. Octavio, yes, Octavio, you uh, need to be mindful here. Um, oh, have you? Is this, an, uh, is this an update? You need to be mindful because the standard walk is doing the same thing what you did in the... Yeah, you're doing the same thing, Octavio, what you did with the basic walk. You really need to get this, nip this in the bud. Octavio, remember the thing about the hand, okay? Remember, remember, okay? The drag and overlap on the hand. The hand comes forward, okay? Like this, and then I'm going to draw it in another color. I'm going to exaggerate. We don't do it this much. We don't do it this much. I'm going to exaggerate just so you kind of see the arc here. And then it, then this is how we get the nice flowing. So then, okay, Roger and Vincent, look at the arc, okay? So the arc comes like this, okay? And then the elbow. So I've exaggerated. We don't do it that extreme, Octavio, but can you see how your standard walk is good, pretty good in every department, but it's lacking. It's, it's a little stiff in that aspect. And it's the same thing you did in the basic walk, and I knew I needed to talk to you about this. So um, that's what's happening. And it also makes the arm, because you you see, it makes a volume issue on the arm where there shouldn't be one. Um, you see there, it's not about foreshortening. We don't foreshorten yet, okay? It's more about, um, you see how small his arm is when it's more straighter, and then how long it is when it's more bent. Because of your arc, you're following the wrong arc. The, you know, otherwise it's pretty decent, you know? Um, it's pretty decent. Nice effect. But hey, Vincent, can you see what Octavio is learning from this? Can you look at this character's hips? Can you look at this character's shoulders? Can you see what Octavio is learning from doing this exercise? He's learning about how to put, how different body mechanics work in a walk cycle. Okay, he's not just doing a usual, typical flat down, pass, you know, up, you know, contact down, pass, up, you know. He's doing a lot of crazy things with the you know, making sure he understands the distribution of weight. That's why I've called this standard, because because I wanted to kind of make this the standard knowledge. It's not a standard cycle. He's strutting. But I've called this a standard cycle because I wanted it to be the standard that people think about when they think about all the different things that are moving, you know, the arcing of the pelvis, the arcing of the upper, but, you, the, you know, and the head tilting, the counterbalancing of the head. So overall, not uh, not a bad effort at all, Octavia. Just wa watch out on 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 that. Um, I haven't read the comments here. Ali Rojas, this is a really nice test. Uh, Roger Wade is going to love doing this one. Uh, lovely. I mean, I saw this on Instagram. I'd, I've got nothing to say other than just lovely stuff. You've recreated it. I love your motion blur effects. You've recreated the effect. So, Jung, if you look at this. So, Jung, this is a really good example of the string at the start. If you look at that, it's it's not it's 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 bursting to life, and it's a little bit staccato, but it's not that harsh. So, can you see? It's this nice build into it. Really, really nice build into that. Love it. Uh, love your motion de blur design. The tricky thing is bringing the string to a stop. Oh, nice little bit of rocking, but you know we can live with that. Nice, love that. Love that. Um, this is uh, Kitchikat. Selena Nina, lovely. Um, just keep going. She says you can see why. Just All I can say is just keep going. Uh, you know. Um, yeah, uh, Al Renz. Yeah, I, I gave Al Renz uh, my thoughts on that. I don't need to say anything more. I'm going to leave it at that now. Um, I'm going to end the stream now. Um, just going to gum on the chat. I think that is kind of enough in terms of the uh the growth development and progress 
let's just go and have a look one final reminder to people um what interested in the library uh just visit ambanimation.com um you got to click on real animator training you have the option to join the library um you can uh have th these three tiers you can upgrade you have a year to upgrade uh so no no monthly upgrade pressure or anything like that and um yeah go check it out ambanimation.com real animated training library right um my pleasure got it i'll work on my arcs thank you very much oh nice um ta -ta -ta. i'm in the middle of the first one um yeah i think that's it i think we have um we have gone teacher is using software for the grid yeah i'm not and i'm i use software to record the screen red fox you know i don't um i'm not against it i would use a ruler i would use a ruler and a pen pencil to draw a straight line there's you know people need to think a little bit about the um you know you know uh, about rational rational thinking okay rational thinking tools tools the software is a tool okay but what i tell people is don't be a tool of a tool and that's what most people are when you're when you're more concerned about software than the actual drawing okay you see i wanted to make a drawing i wanted to make a drawing as fast as i could to get the point across as as quickly as i could and i did and it's a bloody good drawing for the time that it took okay you know i didn't even think i just scribbled and i used the tools for what i needed i didn't sit there and pull and play and, and um and ah about how to make it work in the software or how to make it work as a drawing i did what was necessary and i got the result super fast and that's what i recommend to everybody get the skills acquire the ability and then you know you will be able to you don't think feel okay yeah you should so watch legend there are two versions uh life fantasy i can't say which one is better i love both i love the uh jerry goldsmith original which is what ridley scott wanted uh but uh then i but i grew up watching the tangerine dream uh teenage version uh uh for which was more for teen audiences and i can't outright say which one has is stronger so for me the tangerine dream one is every bit as good as the one using jerry goldsmith score but they both tell slightly different stories um so uh what it's really interesting really interesting just watch it for the artistry maybe you're a bit younger i don't know if you'll like the movie but anybody watching that movie who's an artist would cannot fail but be impressed with the visual qualities uh so jong if you want to try it again um i think maybe so jong the best thing to do would be to go onto the cycles and come back to it a little bit like what octavio did octavio is going back to some previous exercises um awesome vincent awesome i'm glad that you're looking you're, you're looking forward and you're looking ahead this is what it's all about real growth real development real progress real understanding real ability making it real training for real that's what it's all about um and a new one feel the change for real there you go it never stops being real with uh, the real animator training library and that's what i'm super super proud of i like keeping it real all the time uh now i'm in now i'm handing out money to some of my members who have who've proven their worth by letting them animate and not just animating you got to think about it with Aaron's animation Aaron's Aaron's cleanup work so you got to understand are you going to join the library this is a promotional piece so, i'm promo going to be uh, doing facebook ads with some drawing that is not it's my animation it's my roughs but you're not seeing my you're, so this is Aaron's drawing are you going to join the library so that's what really makes me happy is as my students the real animator training library people are now getting to the level where I can just use their work to promote the library, you know? Uh so it's just awesome. Absolutely awesome. We're getting to that stage. It's just real everything about it. I'm so happy to just keep saying that. Um 
Okay, and not had much of a chat. I grew up watching old movies with my parents. So I'll be fine. Awesome. Yeah, I should have known that. Um, okay, then, people. Uh, not much going on in the chat. I'm going to end the stream anyway. We've had a great stream. Just a little reminder before I go what we did. Um, to anybody who's got up late thinking this is just looking at people's work. We're following up on the series on uh, the Red Riding Hood. Okay, remember we designed these characters. We did this mood shot. Today we designed Grandma's Cottage. We did two variants. One was based on a wolf's foot and a footprint. And the other one was based on... Um, a wolf. Okay? The other one was based on a wolf where we kind of did this kind of like design here. So we learned about that. Okay? We learned about that. And we'll be moving on to the uh, next... Uh, we'll be moving on to the next stage. Uh, which is we're getting closer to actually storyboarding now uh, we've got some stuff to work with so um, I'll have to have a think about what we'll be doing on in the next one but uh, hopefully the series you're having fun with it and enjoying it okay then thanks a lot see you later everybody you've been a great audience as usual and I'll see you on the next one thanks a lot bye bye <laughs>